Hmm. Man, I used to love this car. I used to love this car. So this, this and the Gallardo originally basically came out when I was like in my teen years and I was like, oh, these cars are so cool. Eh, they're still pretty cool. I never really got on board after they finished this group. Like they put the, um, they discontinued these cars and replaced them with the Aventador and I just went, uh, yeah. I don't care, like, you know what I mean? Uh, there's a very specific point in my childhood where I, or like my young adulthood where I was super in on supercars and there's stuff before that that I really liked because of design and stuff and now like the modern stuff I'm like, oh great, that pointy plastic ugly thing that's designed for turbo rich people <laughs> like yay crass expenditures of money that for disgustingly overly wealthy capitalist assholes yay <laughs> so I just like oh, you know and like they feel really mass produced on top of everything like even though these ones were also mass produced it's just uh, you know I think it was just what you grow up with right like I like the Zonda and then I really didn't like the next Pagani as much. I would, I still like it, but it's like, yeah, I think I've said before, I kind of used to watch Top Gear and then I just gradually started to realize as I grew up, ah, oh, look, the latest Dodge Vipers on here. And it's worth more money than I could ever feasibly earn in a hundred years. And it will be replaced in two months on Top Gear by something that's faster. Wow, that's depressing. <laughs> and then was just like, oh, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna say fuck it, because like these, this stuff's really expensive in the UK too. Like, because you're paying all these taxes on top, and then the insurance and all that shit, and it's just, and there's traffic everywhere, so it just depressed the hell out of me. And I thought, oh, you know, like I'm just gonna forget about it. If you want to go fast, cheaply and really feel the speed, you're better off just buying motorbikes because you're paying a lot less money and they're a lot less like, look at me, look at me. I guess some super sports are still very look at me, but people don't really know as much. So if you're trying to attract less attention, they just see fast motorbike. If you cannot divert attention if you're driving a Lamborghini. You want gold diggers to annoy you, get a Lamborghini. <laughs> you want to be a target for people to try and rip you off, get a Lamborghini. My mate's pretty... I shouldn't say he's wealthy. My mate's got uh, a Kawasaki and motorbike guys are like, oh, a Kawasaki and a few people who vaguely understand go, oh, a flashy green bike. I think that's a Kawasaki Ninja because that's kind of a known name. But most people don't even notice and are just like, oh yeah, look, he's got a fast bike, it makes a lot of noise, how annoying. <laughs> so... But I do like the Mochilago. It's probably a f more affordable to me now, but if I bought it used, but like, it's not really the point. Anyway, I modified this a bunch. Look, it's got fancy lights and stuff. And it makes a pretty fun sound. I remember in, uh, most Wanted, you unlock the Gallardo. You, and I bought the Gallardo in uh, Most Wanted and the noise it made, because for some reason they decided we're going to make the Gallardo like 50% louder than every other car in the game. And it was just so loud and impressive sounding that, and it had such a unique tone that I was like, Oh boy, this is amazing. I love the sound of this car. And that's what really made me fall in love with the Lamborghini Gallardo. And then I got the Murcielago as well in that game and was like, oh, these cars are so cool. Oh yeah, they're so cool. And then like after that, like I said, I just 
completely lost interest in Lamborghini. This one has a pretty impressive sound too. Ah. You can see, if you look in the bottom right of the speedo, it's got pretty good acceleration at the low end. And it gets through the gears really quickly, but once it hits kind of like fifth gear, sixth gear, it starts to go, it starts to get a little wallowy. It's like it's pausing, which means when you're on streets like this, it can be very hard to catch up with cars of similar kind of speed and performance rating because it's like it can outrun everything in the short run. But then, like, it's having trouble keeping up with them in, like, top gear. Now, win. Okay, what do I need to do now? So, we sh this should be the last ultimate part before we get into Ultimate Plus, right? Because last episode, we got the Nitrous, the final Nitrous, Ultimate Nitrous. And um, we're missing that ECU for some reason. <laughs> like, hey guys, we decided to make the ECU the last thing. Everyone's hyped for the Ultimate ECU. <laughs> like, come on, man. Fine, let's go for it. <clears throat> it reminds me of a story of one of my mates who was modifying his, uh, he bought, what was it, a GTO or an RX-7? Something like that, maybe an MR2. God, it's been a long time, he bought one. And he started, like, fucking around with the ECU. He got some computer program and was like, yeah, I'm going to do this thing. And it was like, he, but he fried out the ECU and fucked it up so the car wouldn't start anymore. And he had to buy a C at Ibiza to get back and forth to work. So, yeah, that's all I know about ECUs is, yeah, don't fuck around with ECUs unless you know what you're doing because it can stop the car from working. Because <laughs> if, you know, it's what helps turn on the engine. <laughs> In the, this case. Ah, oh, that guy was funny. <laughs> uh, one of my friends, like, I used to talk to him a lot, and they said, oh yeah, like, yeah, before you came to work, he actually got taken to one side and had a written warning because he smelled so bad. And I think that's possibly one of the worst reasons I've ever heard of anyone in the service industry getting a, uh, well, it's actually security, airport security. He got uh, written up for being too stinky, which is <laughs> because he for some reason assumed, like a lot of people who go to the airport early when they're passengers, hey man, it's early, I don't want to wake up so early, I just will skip showering and go and do a six hour shift because it's early in the morning and just shower when I get home which meant that he was just absolutely stinking like and like would just like stink which is so weird <laughs> ah. damn ambulances helping people I used to like the Munchalago because it changes shape while you drive because I'm a child. <laughs> yeah, I jumped that car. Everyone saw what a cool guy I was. Seriously, how many ambulances? How many? Let's go this way. Or not. Is that the right way? It's Heat 5. Oh, it's so far away. <clears throat> yeah, there's some uh, AI drivers around. Bad, bad police. So yeah, I'm kind of sad about the way the game balances cars I mentioned before. I've got a Chevy Bel Air. There's not very much in the way of modifications except hint d hint hint uses as an off-road car, which is like, what the hell? Because uh, it's not an off-road car. And um, in any stretch of the imagination. And 
it's not very fast, but I will do a video separately on that one and the 370Z I've been bitching about. I'm probably not going to do one on my Sylvia. I got the Nissan Sylvia and I don't know what they did, but it's just not fun to drive, so I'm just like, yeah, I don't want to drive it. It doesn't drive well for racing. I tried to turn it into a drift car and you try and start a drift and it just goes at a 90 degree angle and smashes into the nearest wall like it's magnetized to it with electromagnets and I'm just like I'll stick to my RX-7 and my Corvette then for drifting and I'm just like I'll show off my Corvette and my RX-7 at some point they're pretty good fun and drifting in this game is actually pretty good fun it's just for some reason there's hardly anything to do with them so uh, you know, we'll see. I really want to get the Pagani in this game. I know I was just complaining that I don't like it as much as the Zonda, the new one, but like, eh, you know, I might get it just to see, but it's really a long grind to get that, so don't expect that anytime soon. Um, what was the other cars I was going to get? There was a... Uh, a few more high level cars I was thinking of getting but like honestly we're running we're getting to the end of my interest in buying cars in this game because there's just not that many left that I'm really interested in I mean you know there's like the RA Audi there's like all this other stuff but I'm not a huge fan of the Audi R8 so I might get it I might not get it we'll see depends on if I ever have the money and I just say yeah I'll buy that uh, there's a few McLarens, stuff like that, but like, a couple of Ferraris maybe, but like, eh, like I said. Uh, same thing with the 458 Italia. I don't like the 458 Italia because that was around the time I stopped caring about cars as much of that area, and the supercars and stuff. And I'm just like, wow, what an ugly replacement for the, for, for the, the 430. Why is it so ugly? Okay, fine. That was what they decided. Okay. And then, like, the more recent Ferraris I've seen coming out again seem pretty nice, like the Daytona and stuff, but, like, I don't really dig that 458 Italia. Blur. Blur. That could have gone better. I really don't like these high heat races where they choose a race that's like all hill all narrow roads because then all the traffic you've got not much space to squeeze through and it's hard to see because everything is like huge lens flare and bloom everywhere and you're just like ah, oh, I can't see I'm being blinded by all of this neon everywhere It's more luck than skill there. Yeah, see, that's a Pagani there. Yeah. Everyone's just smashing into me there. Like, I don't even know what was, there was something that I was looking at before and was like, yeah, I'll buy that, and like, in this game, like a car. And I can't remember for life of me what it was now. So yeah, that's not really showing a good sign, but like, hey, I'm sure I'll keep finding more cars to mess around with, but like, yeah, after a certain point, my interest is going to wane because I'm just like, oh, you know, there's a few Skylines, there's a few this, but like, you know, they seem to have really butchered the JDM in this game. Like, every JDM car I have, I'm just like, oh, this feels really underpowered and horrible to drive. Oh, what have they done? So, uh, it's kind of put me off going out and buying all the Skylines. I need to do some sort of more rally car stuff so that I can do the final off-road activities and events and stuff I could show that at some point I already got a Subaru WRX and Impreza 
and a Lancer because the game gives you one but I'm gonna try and get some of the other Subarus and do some stuff again I don't give a shit about SUVs so don't expect that anytime soon unless I'm really bored just try and fiddle around with the off-road stuff because for some reason they got some drift zones and then they go hey there's like two or three drift zones in the entire game that are like this hey go do this drift zone by the way it's all on dirt so basically spend a load of money modifying one car to be drift and dirt capable also if you do that it's going to ruin the car's performance so that it's the slowest car imaginable and you're like Oh, oh no, <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna have to spend a lot of time grinding up enough cash to try and play a game of guess which car we're thinking of to get that at the right level. Okay, I got it, cool. Oh, there's a Ford GT. Hey, I might get that GT, that's not bad. Oh, that was convenient too, let's go. Okay, this should be the ECU. I don't know what we'd be doing after that except unlocking Ultimate Plus parts for anything, so we'll see you in the next part if it's, you know, anything new. Let's see what it is. Uh, yeah, it is the ECU. And somehow this car is still slower than the Diablo. 